Hi everyone, so I received a question from this student. So let's look at the question first, then only after that we look back at what this student asked. So the question say that you have a tennis player and this tennis player hits a 0.06 kg ball horizontally approaching at 50 meter per second. And it's approaching at 50 meter per second perpendicular to his racket surface. So you can think of it something like this. So the ball is horizontally approaching. So you can assume the ball is horizontally approaching something like this uh, with a velocity of 50 meter per second. And this approaching, this direction of approaching is perpendicular to the racket surface. So if you look it from the side, then you probably see the racket to be something like this. Okay, this is a rough idea of a racket. I don't know if the racket should look like this. It's some sort of like a baseball bat right now. But yeah, side view, side view, okay. So this here is the racket surface. This dash line that I draw here now, it will represent the racket surface. And it's perpendicular to the direction of motion of the ball. And it says that this ball here, the tennis player will return the shot. So this ball here will go back in opposite direction with a speed of 40 meter per second. So opposite direction, if initially I draw it to be left, then finally it should be in the right hand side direction, I mean to the right. So it should be the final velocity 40.0 meter per second. So once you reach this stage, I believe it's important for us to do something for uh, assigning the direction here okay so the 50 meter per second that they mentioned here together with the 40.0 meter per second that they mentioned here are speed okay because they they talk about the direction using words they don't include the direction as sign in the value they don't say they return the shot at negative 40 meter per second that full stop it doesn't include the, the direction in the value itself so we separate the magnitude, which is 40 meter per second, with the direction, which is opposite direction. The same for the initial velocity, they separate the 40 meter, 40, 50 meter per second with the horizontally approach. The horizontally approaching is the direction. The 50 meter per second is the magnitude. So now if you want to represent it as values here, I believe you learned from your chapter 3 that you have to assign the direction using positive or negative sign. So what I usually do is, it depends on different, different lecture or different students, everybody do it differently. So I usually just assume that uh, for positive sign, it represents uh, to the right. Then if it's negative sign, then it represents to the left. Okay, so once we make this, uh, uh, once we already decided to follow this sign convention, we have to modify a bit the sign. So the initial velocity is pointing to the left. So that will be the negative direction. So we have to attach a negative sign in front of the 50 meter per second. So now the initial velocity is negative 50 meter per second. The final velocity is 40 meter per second. Okay, so I believe that's it for our situation right here. So let's look at question one. Question one asks, calculate the impulse to the ball by the racket so they are asking that how much is the impulse being exerted by the racket onto the ball so the racket exert an impulse on the ball and you want to find the impulse okay so if you want to find an impulse we uh, here talk about impulse so definitely is chapter three so chapter three uh the information given here are velocity so we know that if you want to relate impulse with velocity, we have to change this velocity here to become momentum. Then we find a change of momentum, then we can relate it to impulse through the impulse momentum theorem. So therefore, for question number one, we can use impulse momentum theorem. So the impulse momentum theorem tells us that the final momentum minus the initial momentum will be the impulse experienced by the object okay this is change in momentum of the object 
in just in case someone having problem to differentiate what is by what is on the change in momentum of the object then the j here will represent the impulse exerted on the object okay exerted means by experienced by the object okay exerted on the object means by the object feel this impulse the object experience this impulse okay so how do we calculate it we know the mass of this ball will be 0 0.06 okay we do a bit of factorization then it's left with v minus u inside the bracket so v is 40 u is negative 50 so we have calculated uh, we have already substituted in everything so if we calculate the answer the answer will be 5.40 so this one will be a positive impulse. When we say positive impulse, means by the impulse is pointing in the positive direction. And we take our positive direction to be to the right. Therefore, our impulse will be pointing in this direction. So what does it mean if our impulse is pointing in this direction? Means by this impulse is changing the initial momentum. The initial momentum is pointing in this direction. This is initial momentum. Okay, then the final momentum is to the right. This is our final momentum. So did you see that if you want to bend, if you want to change something which is initially pointing to the left, you want to change it to the right, you have to exert an impulse to the right. Okay, only you can you can make the you can you can change the direction of the momentum from left to right. Okay. If you want to increase the momentum of the object to the left, then you will exert an impulse towards the left. But now you want to change the momentum to go from pointing to the left to pointing to the right. So what you need here is an impulse that is pointing to the right. Okay, you can sort of think of it like this. Huh? Sort of, huh? it's not exactly correct. You can see initially you have momentum like this. Okay. Finally, you have momentum like this. So how do you go from initial to final? You have to, you have to somehow you have to, if you want to connect the arrow, you have to, the arrow have to be pointing towards that side, right? So this change here, you need to be executed by an impulse which is pointing to the right. Okay. If uh, let's say uh, this is another example, if the momentum is initially pointing to the left, then the final momentum is pointing even further more to the left. So what you need to do is you need an impulse that can point something further to the left. So therefore your impulse is pointing to the left. It's just that this impulse is the one that caused your change in momentum. So if something is initially to the left, you want to change it to right, of course you have to exit something pointing to the right, only you can change the direction to be the right. If things is in the left, you want it to be further to the left, of course you have to exit the impulse to be in the left direction. Okay, uh, that's the idea of it. Uh. Okay, but let's not dwell too much on this thing. Uh, Let's look at the answer. The answer here they say 5.40 newton second, but they also give negative value accepted. Why is it possible that you have negative value accepted? How can you accept both sign? Doesn't both sign mean by different direction? Yes, it means that the impulse can be in the left direction or the impulse can be in the right direction. So how is it possible that you can accept both direction for impulse? So here I will demonstrate it to you. Okay, so this diagram that we draw here, we put our racket to be here, then we say the ball is traveling to the left, right? But the question here didn't really say that the ball is traveling to the left. The ball can be traveling to the right as well. So instead of drawing it to be like in situation A, what you can do is, you can do it like situation B. Situation B will be something like this. You have your racket surface as well. We're getting poor in my drawing. So this is the plane of your tennis racket. But now your ball will be approaching your tennis racket 
from the left hand side of the racket. So it means by the ball is traveling with an initial velocity pointing in the positive direction. So now the initial velocity will be positive 50.0 meter per second. But after it's being hit by the tennis racket, it will rebound and move in the opposite direction. And now this opposite direction is pointing to the left, therefore it's a negative direction. Therefore the final velocity should be negative right now. Okay, so this is another way of imagining this situation. There's two ways you can imagine it. So now if you imagine it like the situation B right here, if you calculate it, then J equals to delta momentum. Okay, I will just do MV minus U. So you will see that it will be 0 0.06. Then your V is negative 40. Then minus 50.0. Then now if you calculate everything, it will be a negative answer. Negative 5.40 newton second. That's why it's possible for your impulse to be pointing to the right or pointing to the left. As you can see here, you need an impulse that is pointing to the left. Only you can change something, change its momentum from going to the right, you change it to going to the left. You need an impulse that is pointing to the left. And because the impulse is pointing to the left, therefore you get a negative impulse. Okay, that's why both signs are acceptable because they didn't define extremely clearly the direction. Okay, so that's for question uh, one. How about question two? Question two asks about the work that the does the racket do on the ball. So the ball experience work done by the racket. The racket do some work. The racket does some work on the ball. The ball experience work done. Because work done is done by the racket on the ball. So this kind of situation, right? What we can do is if we analyze it using the force time displacement, right? It can be quite complicated. Because the displacement, you can think of it as there's a first portion of the motion which is moving to let's go back to this diagram a over here the first the first portion of the motion should be pointing to the left then slowly it will stop then it will do a u-turn then only it will rebound in the opposite direction so you can see that there's actually two sections of displacement one in one foot one is towards the racket direction one is away from the racket direction so in that case, right, you have a uh, positive work done and negative work done. Means by let's say for this situation, right, the journey part one here, you experience negative work done. But for the journey for the journey part two over here, you experience positive work done. Then if you if you total them up, then you get the work done that you are counting, that you are trying to calculate. But let's just not, not get too complicated about it. Because you can solve it using the concept of energy. Okay, you have initial speed, you have final speed. So speed besides uh, velocity, you can change it to momentum. Then velocity, you can just take the magnitude, which is speed. Then you can convert it to kinetic energy. So from this solely, just by looking at this diagram, you can know the change in kinetic energy of the ball itself. So if you know the change in kinetic energy of the ball, uh, you can use work energy theorem to relate it to the total work done. Okay, so let me write down the formula first. Okay, uh, this is work done. Remember the word total equals to the change in kinetic energy. So this one is the change in kinetic energy of the ball. Okay, so this is the total work done. So now you should think whether it's by the ball or on the ball. The answer is it's on the ball. Total work done on the ball. So the ball experiences work done by other stuff. So in this case, the racket does work on the ball. So the ball experience work done by the racket. And because the ball experience work done by the racket on the ball, therefore the ball experiences changes in its kinetic energy. That's the idea. You have to be clear with the by and the on. The ball is the one that receives work done. Work done is done on the ball. 
because work done is done on the ball, therefore it experiences change in kinetic energy. And remember, this is always a total work done. Okay, this is always total work done. When you equate it to kinetic energy, it's always total work done. It's not change in mechanical energy, it's not change in potential energy. If you have a problem with this, I have another video in it. I can find it in my channel. Okay, so for this, I believe it's quite simple. Half mv square minus half mu square. So that will be work total. If you want to find what is the total work done, so you can draw the free body diagram of the ball. Then you know that you experience some kind of gravity over here. Okay, because of that, you have weight. At the same time, because the racket is touching the ball, then therefore there's normal force pointing in that direction. I'm doing it based on diagram A here. So your direction of motion, your ball is moving either in this direction or that direction. Okay, depends on which part of the journey you are. But for, for this weight over here, the theta is 90 degree. So there will be no work done by weight. Therefore, the work done by the racket, which is the work done due to this normal force, will be the total work done. So if you want to write it really long, what you can do is you can write work done by the weight plus work done by the normal. But because the work done by the weight it's 90 degree, then you can uh, say it's equal to zero. Then you can continue like this. Okay. So you can find the work done by the racket. If normal, you are not comfortable with the with the thing being called normal. Okay, it's flexible actually. What what name you want to call it? Okay, I call it force by the racket. Okay, work done by force of the racket. So now work done by the force of the racket. Then it will be equal to half zero point zero six. Then it be v square minus u square. So v square here is 40.0 square. Then minus u square will be negative 50 square. Okay, so if you calculate it, your answer will be negative 27.00. So that is the work done by the racket on the board. And this is the answer. So now if you look at the question, the question says you can have answer as 27.0 Joule and negative value are accepted. So the issue here is how is it possible to have positive and negative answer for work? In my opinion, for me, after looking at it for quite some time, I think it's impossible to get positive value because initially it has a greater speed Finally, it has a speed which is less. So the thing actually, no matter what, the magnitude of the velocity actually decreases. So it means that it slows down already. So if initial and final, there's a slowdown experienced by the ball. So definitely there should be a negative work done. Positive net, positive total work done means an object experience increase in kinetic energy. It means like increase in speed. Negative total work done means by the object experience a decrease in kinetic energy or a decrease in speed. So in this case, it's a decrease in speed. So reasonably, you can say it's a negative work done. So I don't think it's allowed to take a positive value. Okay, But if you feel like I have mistaken something or I have missed out some detail that make 27.0 joule acceptable, please give me, please just inform me. Yeah. Okay, I might mislook something as well. So for me, I believe the only answer is negative 27.0. Okay, so that's for question number two. Question number three, if the ball hits the plane of the racket at an angle, uh, the impulse will the impulse delivered to the ball increase, decrease or remain the same? So now instead of having the racket perpendicular, racket surface perpendicular to the direction of motion of the ball, now it's at an angle. So if you if you think of drawing it, then a drawing should be something like this.
then your ball might probably be approaching like this. So I believe it will still be, I believe they're asking for the same situation means by it's going like this initially. Then when it comes back, this is, I believe it's like this. I believe the final velocity component in the x direction should be 40.0 meter per second. I believe this is the question that they're asking. Okay, to be honest, okay, now I'm trying to be honest here. To be honest, I'm not sure why it's being kept constant here. Because it say the ball hits the plane of the record at an angle and it asks for will the impulse increase, decrease, or remain the same. But actually, I don't know the ball. Yes, the ball will be approaching with the same condition. But I'm not sure when it re when the ball rebound, when the ball return, is it that the velocity component in the x direction remain 40 meter per second? Or uh, would it possibly be the ball is returning at an angle, right? But when it returns at an angle, the final velocity is equals to 40 meter per second. Means that if you if you resolve it, then you get a smaller Vx, which is something smaller than 40 meter per second. I am not sure what kind of situation they're asking me to answer here. Okay, it might if if it's the pink situation here, you have a one set of answer. If it's a white situation here, this 40 meter per second for x direction, then you have another set of answer. But for me, I I I I I'm more inclined to think that it's the white version that they are asking for, not the pink version. It's why they are asking that when the ball returns with an x component velocity of 40 meter per second, uh, then what will be the impulse? Will the impulse increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, this is my deduction. I'm not sure what the author of the question might be thinking. So if you have different opinion, feel free to tell me as well. So if I would like to explain this thing, we first we have to know that even if there's a Vx which is constant at 40 meter per second, there will uh, most probably be a new velocity component being introduced. It means by we will have a new Vy which is not equal to zero anymore. Okay, so before that, before that, if you look back at our old diagram, there, there is no y component velocity at all. Final initial, there's no y component velocity. But now if you look at this at an angle situation, you will see that there's a new velocity component Vy being introduced. So the initial velocity, nothing changed. The final velocity in the x component, nothing changed. But now you experience a new velocity component at the final. It means that you are introducing something new to the component. There is something new to the situation. There's an extra component. So if you have an extra component, that means the impulse will have to be greater as well. Or else you cannot introduce new things. Okay. So to slowly, slowly explain the situation, I think I'll explain like this. Uh, the ball. experience the same change in momentum in the x direction so the ball experiences the same change in momentum in the x direction however there's a new change in momentum that happens in the y direction so what does that mean it means that we have to have we have to keep the impulse in the x direction the same okay because the change in momentum is the same in the x direction but because there's a new change in momentum in the y direction, we have to introduce a new impulse in the y direction. The x remain the same, the y will introduce a new impulse component. Therefore, the impulse in the x direction remains the same, whereas there's a new uh, impulse component in the y direction. So if the x component remain the same but introduce a new y component, so if you combine the x and y together, the impulse will definitely has to have to increase. So therefore, and then use therefore already, hence the impulse will increase. Okay, so that's my response. Uh, if I'm sitting for an exam, then this is the question being asked. This is how I will explain the question. But of course, I don't have the answer scheme, so I might think differently. 
if it was if it w it was the pink case just now then i'm not sure how should i answer this question because the ch there's change in the x direction impulse and there's a new y direction impulse as well so if you combine together whether the combined impulse should be bigger or smaller than the original impulse means means impossible to determine okay uh, unless you know what angle is it but for now i just leave it uh, using this assumption that I make here, then this is my explanation to the situation. So my answer is the impulse will increase. So if you look back to the question asked by the student, so I don't know how to explain the physics way. Okay, I've tried to explain it. Now this is my attempt. I think many people can do better than that. Okay, so what do you think? I think the impulse will increase. Yes, correct. Because the change of velocity increase. Uh, the x direction uh, there's no change but there's a new change in velocity in the y y component okay uh, the change of change in velocity increases because the final velocity got vectored uh, it's not that you can see uh, got vectored is a word. it's it's probably not the correct word uh. before that even though it's all in the horizontal direction it's still a vector also because the velocity has magnitude and direction so it's still a vector it's just that uh, before that everything can say it's everything ha is happening in one dimension but uh, the the new case in number three here you involve two dimensional motion so your momentum that's two dimension already so this uh this uh this introduction of a new dimension causes the change in the momentum to be greater okay so this is my attempt to answer the question and this is question one two three being explained here thank you very much